This video is sponsored by SeatGeek. On this ticket app, you have access to cheap NBA tickets. Use the discount code EASYBUCKETS for $20 off your first purchase. Yo, what is going on guys? Welcome back to a very special episode of Easy Buckets. This video is me teaching you guys how to play fantasy basketball. So of course guys with this title, if you already know how to play fantasy basketball, this is not the video for you. I am specifically making this video on people who want to get into fantasy basketball and not already know how to play. But if you know how to play and just want a refresher, you guys can definitely watch this video as well. Fantasy basketball is one of the funnest things to be a part of when talking about basketball and NBA. In this video, I'm going to try to explain fantasy basketball the easiest way possible as if I was teaching my mom how to play. The first thing I want to say about fantasy basketball is that it is very fun to play. It is something that is a passion and something in a way a hobby. But one negative thing about it is that it's actually very time consuming. So if you're just getting into fantasy basketball, expect some time out of your life to be put towards fantasy. But without wasting any more time, we're going straight to what is fantasy basketball and how to play. Hey guys, before I continue on with this video, I just have one update to give you guys. During your fantasy basketball season, if you want to be able to message me privately and ask me questions on trade advice, drafting advice, or anything basketball related, I have created a platform where you can do so. This platform is called Patreon. If you guys are unfamiliar with what Patreon is, Patreon is a website where you guys as viewers can support me on another level. But what's most important is that me as a content creator can have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with you as the viewer. Yes guys, one-on-one. -on -one. When I first started YouTube, my goal was to create the number one fantasy basketball community in the whole entire world. And with Patreon, I will get one step closer to that dream. Over the past two years, I have been giving free fantasy basketball advice on my Instagram account, guys. And to be completely honest, it is not easy accommodating so much people like that. I love doing it and I love talking to you guys on a one-on-one -on -one basis. But it is really hard to separate those who actually want to support my channel or those who are just coming for free advice. So with Patreon and one-on-one -on -one fantasy basketball advice, I can use this platform to actually talk and put more focus on those who really want to support me as a content creator and support the future of the Easy Buckets channel. After I post a video, there are so much people out there who always like to comment right away and show so much love and support. And with Patreon, I would be able to welcome those people into a better community where I can be more involved than just replying to your comments. So if this is something you guys might be interested in, I would really highly recommend you guys check out my Patreon page, which is patreon.com slash easybuckets. I would really love if you guys could support me on the Patreon account. It will 100% keep me motivated to make the best videos for you guys, the best quality, the best advice, and everything to make this basketball channel, fantasy basketball channel, better. So if you guys got time, go check out my page. So to answer what is fantasy basketball, I can explain it like this. You are the general manager of a team that has not been made. In other words, you can get any NBA player and make the best team possible to your liking. Yes, you can add as many best players, many of your favorite players on the same team. And this is done through a draft. What drafting is, is that you and all the people in your league, aka your friends, whether it's your co-workers, whether it's your family, choose players to join your team in a fashionly order. With this, you can add LeBron James and Kevin Durant on the same team if they're available to be drafted. You get the point. You get to make your own fantasy dream team. This is one of the coolest and funnest aspects about fantasy basketball. You becoming the holder, the controller of something that you love. But fantasy basketball is more than just drafting your favorite and the best and the most popular players. Fantasy basketball is drafting players that put stats on the stat sheet in real life. For an example, they say LeBron James is the best player in the world all over the NBA, all over the news. But in fact, in fantasy basketball, he's not the best fantasy basketball player. To be known as one of the best fantasy basketball players, you need to be able to stack up the stat sheet. In other words, put up points, rebounds, assists, steals, blocks, and all the other categories. Of course, big NBA superstars like LeBron James, Kevin Durant, they might not be the best fantasy players, but it is a fact that most fantasy players, well, most of the best fantasy players are the more popular players. I'm just trying to separate the fantasy world and the regular world, which means there are best fantasy players and best NBA players. So when building a team, don't just focus on that, focus on players that fill the stat sheet. And what do I mean by stat sheet? I'll get that into later after I explain which type of fantasy games are there. 
So when talking about fantasy basketball, the most popular fantasy basketball apps are Yahoo and ESPN. I personally use the Yahoo app because I was actually exposed to that app first, so I've been using that app since, but ESPN is good as well. But for fantasy games, there are three versions of fantasy basketball you can be a part of. My personal favorite, there's Head to Head, there's Roto, and there's Points Leagues. In my personal opinion, if you're a beginner, you should do the head to head category and this is why. Head to head means that you actually are in a league full of let's say an even number of 10 to 12 players and every single week you are matched up against one other member of the league and you guys are playing them one on one rather than playing the whole league. I personally love this choice and this pick because you guys can actually talk one on one with the player you're playing, talk some trash, and also build a better relationship with the people in your league like this. Also with head to head matchups, sometimes you end up matching up with someone who has a horrible week or has a horrible playing schedule and that is a good advantage for you and that's what makes strategy very important in fantasy basketball. Knowing who you play the next week, building your team to match up against their team is a great way of strategizing for fantasy basketball. Roto is another kind of fantasy game that in my category I'm putting it as a super competitive. So if you're new to fantasy basketball, I don't even want to talk about this. You guys shouldn't really even like look at it right now. And the third final game is called Points Leagues where you still build a team and everything, but instead of facing players one on one, you face people throughout the whole league at the same time. But I also don't recommend you guys do that. I recommend head to head for beginners. I personally have been a part of Roto, Points Leaks, and Head to Head, and I actually love and enjoy Head to Head more. Of course, Head to Head can also be competitive depending on your league, and because I'm the commissioner of my fantasy basketball league, I try to make that as competitive as possible. So depending on your commissioner and who's running the league, they will pick the kind of fantasy game for your league. Now, I want to talk a little bit about draft day. Draft day is probably one of the most anticipated days of the year, personally for me. I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys can relate because draft day is when you get to build the best team possible, build your potential championship team, and also one hour to two hour of your day will be focusing on a hobby that you love. I just wanted to say that I'm pretty sure you guys all love draft day as well. So when it comes to drafting and explaining how many drafts are there, there is one that I highly recommend and that is the live serpentine draft. What that draft is, is that you draft depending on your draft number pick and then the next round it's fixed and it is the opposite order of the actual draft. So if you're the first pick in the first round, that means you'll be the last pick in the next round and in the next round you'll be the first pick. You guys get the point, it reverses every single round. The reason why I think that's most fair is because people who get the first pick usually gets the best fantasy player and if they get the first pick in the second round too, that's pretty unfair because you already have the best fantasy player. You get the point, I believe that is the best draft to do so. So if you're a commissioner, that is my personal suggestion and recommendation to put as your draft. If you are drafting your team, you will be able to create a similar position to the NBA. That is, you can pick a point guard, a shooting guard, a small forward, a power forward, a center, and then the rest of your lineup is kind of like the bench, like an NBA team. Most fantasy league teams have 12 to 13 players on it, just like an NBA team. You obviously pick your best players first, which aka is your starting lineup, and then pick bench players to support that starting lineup. But the cool thing about fantasy is you don't have to pick every position right away. If you want to pick three point guards at the beginning, go ahead. If you believe they will fill up your stat sheet the best, that is your strategy and your decision. But the point is by the end of your draft, you have to fill out every single roster spot. Whether it's three point guards, three shooting guards, you have to have at least one of every position filled. The commissioner of your league will also get to choose what positions will be there. But of course, the most popular ones are the point guard, shooting guard, small forward, power forward, center, and then the guard, the forward, and the utility and bench. So once you've created your team, the NBA season will go on and whatever players you have on your team, whatever stat sheet they produce in real life will affect your fantasy team and your fantasy score. So the fantasy season is just like the NBA season. It goes from October all the way to April. And then once the actual NBA playoff starts, that's when fantasy basketball ends. So during your regular season, you need to do well in the regular season to fill up the standings, just like an Eastern or Western Conference in the NBA. And then in the playoffs, you obviously play the worst teams if you're the best team, and obviously play the best team if you're the worst team. Usually the playoffs of fantasy basketball is the last month of regular season NBA. So you guys need to be able to figure out all these little tips and tricks because whatever happens in the NBA will affect your team. 
Yes, if you have a player on your team that gets injured, that will affect your fantasy team. If you have a player that got traded, that will affect your team. And if you have a player that gets rested a lot, that will also affect your team. So when drafting your team, you need to be very mindful of all these little factors that will affect your season long term. I personally play in competitive leagues, and I'm just gonna say this, that guys, if you really love basketball and treat basketball as a hobby of yours, fantasy basketball could be a great hobby as well. One thing I also want to say is that when you learn how to play fantasy basketball, you actually gain more knowledge of the basketball itself, you learn more about the NBA, you're more updated about what's going on, and that just makes you as a fan a lot better. So if you're new to the fantasy basketball world, welcome, I am Easy Buckets, and I'm here to help you guys throughout the whole season. Throughout the whole season, I'll be making fantasy basketball videos, so be sure to hit that subscribe button if you don't want to miss any of those videos. If you love this basic video on how to play fantasy basketball, be sure to show your love and support by smashing that thumbs up button, and also leaving your opinions down in the comment section down below. And of course, guys, if you guys have any questions, put your comments down in the comment section down below. We are a big community of fantasy basketball players, and I would love for you to be a part of it. Once again, guys, if you guys have not checked out my Patreon account, go do that as well. With fantasy basketball, what you do is that during the beginning of every single week, you set your lineups, which means you put your players on an active roster spot to accumulate points for your team. So for example, let's say you wake up one day and you forget to set up your lineups. Whatever happened that day, it doesn't accumulate because your players were not on the active roster, but they were on your bench. In other words, you need to be active on fantasy basketball and make sure that your lineups are set every single day. There are options of setting it for the whole week, but I still recommend checking it even for two minutes every single morning to make sure everything is good. I'm going to be making a lot of videos about breakout fantasy players, sleeper picks, undervalued players, bounce back players, players to avoid, best tips and tricks. So much fantasy basketball videos are coming and you guys don't want to miss it. I'm also going to be doing a special segment and video on how to be a good commissioner of fantasy basketball. So if you're a commissioner, stay tuned for that as well. But yeah guys, other than that, take it easy, God bless, and I'll see you guys next time on Easy Buckets. Woo! Hey, look at that boy, huh? Cooking up joints, like, run at the school, huh? Like, you already know, uh, never got help, uh, so, did it myself, uh, doing so well, huh? I bet you can't tell that I've been running, like, did my dance.